In this video, we're going to build a custom component that will allow us to take some JSON data like this and automatically create a reactive angular form that looks like this. Whatever fields we define in our JSON will automatically be created in the form and we can even supply validators to it as well. First, we'll need to set up our JSON data source. We are just going to create a static JSON file inside of our assets folder. So this is an Ionic application, but you could do this with any kind of Angular application. So I'm going to create a file called myform.json and I'm going to paste in that data that we want to use. As well as using a static file like this, you could also load in this data from some external source as well. Now we will create our component by running Ionic G component components forward slash JSON form. And what we're going to create is a component that can take this JSON data as an input and automatically render the form for us. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our newly constructed component and we are going to set up an input. So we've set up JSON form data as an input and we've also set up the on push change detection strategy, which I'm not going to talk about in this video, but I will link to another tutorial that covers that. Now we're using an any type for our input here, which we can do if we want, but we know the shape of our data. We have this uh, rigidly defined data structure here, so we can represent this more clearly with interfaces or types. And what that will do for us is it will more strongly enforce the type of data that we're working with, and it's going to allow VS Code to provide us with code hints through IntelliSense. So we can get some automatic completion and it's going to probably prevent us from making some mistakes. I'm just going to add these interfaces directly into this file. You can see we have quite a few here to represent the structure of our data, but basically everything that is represented here just matches what we can supply in the JSON data. Now, if you're not comfortable with creating your own TypeScript interfaces, you can also come to this website, transform.tools, and if you go to the JSON section, you can choose to TypeScript. And what you can do is just paste in what you want to create interfaces for. And it's going to create a pretty accurate representation of what you need. You might still need to fiddle around with what is required and not required, but this will get you most of the way there. And you might also notice that we are exporting this one interface. That is because we're going to be making use of that in our homepage component where we're loading the JSON data to give that a type of JSON form data. So that's the only one we need to export from this file. And then we can just give our input a type of JSON form data. And now we have uh, our type set up properly. Now, before we get too carried away with actually building this component, uh, let's check that we can actually load in the data and pass it into this component first. So what we're going to do is go to our home page, and we're going to add the HTTP client and our type that we created. We're going to inject the HTTP client, we will set up an on init lifecycle hook, a class member to hold on to the data that we're loading in, which will have a type of JSON form data. And then in our ng on init lifecycle hook, we're just making a get request to load that form data. We're subscribing to it and setting the result onto the form data class member. So this will load in that JSON file and all of that data is going to be available through form data. Now, since we are using HTTP client, we will need to add the HTTP client module to our homepage module. So we will add that module. Since we'll be using the reactive forms module as well, we are going to swap out the normal forms module with the reactive forms module. And we're going to need to declare our component as well, our JSON form component, which we can just add to the declarations. So with all of that set up, we should be able to go to our home page now. And I'm just going to simplify all of this. We will drop in our JSON form component and we're going to supply that JSON form data input with the form data that we just loaded in in our home page. And now that data should be available within our component. Now, instead of using the on init lifecycle hook here, what we're actually going to do is import the on changes lifecycle hook. And we're also going to need to import something called simple changes. And then we are going to set up this ng on changes hook like this. And we'll need to make sure we change that implements as well. 
And so the idea here is that our input is going to change when the data has been loaded in via that HTTP request. It's not going to be available right away. So by setting up this on changes lifecycle hook, we can detect when that happens, but this will also be triggered when the component is first being created. So we check this changes value here to see if it's the first change. And if it's the first change, we don't want to do anything, but if it's not, we want to log out whatever this uh, input is. So we're going to save that and load it up in the browser just to check that we're getting everything that we think we're getting. Okay, so we have the application running in the browser now and we can see that our component is loading fine. Uh, but what we really want to see is if we're getting the data that we actually need. So if we just pull up the console, we can see that we're getting a console log here from our JSON form component, which has all of the form controls that we want to create, which have been loaded in from that JSON data source. So we do have that data being received inside of that component now. So now what we want to do is turn that data into a reactive form. So we're going to head back into our component and we're going to add some additional inputs for our reactive forms. We'll be using the form builder, form groups and validators. We will inject the form builder through our constructor as FB and then we'll set up a new form group called my form and it's just going to be an empty group. Now all we really need to do is add controls to that form group. So what we're going to do is create a new method called create form, and that's going to take in our form controls. It's going to loop over them and it's going to call the add control method on the form group for each control. So we're looping through all of the controls from our data and then we are adding them to this form group. So this is the basic idea, but we haven't properly implemented this yet because there is an extra detail here that we need to discuss. But before we get to that, we will need to call this method from somewhere. So what we're going to do is just swap out our console.log statement with a call to the create form method that's going to pass in the data that we actually want to create the controls from. So this would be a nice and simple way to get this all working but the one flaw here is that it wouldn't support validators. As it stands now, this will add controls for each of the controls we defined in the JSON data, and it will just set them up with an initial empty uh, state. But we also want to allow the ability to supply validators, like whether it's required, if there's a minimum length for the field, a maximum length, uh, if, if an email is required or whatever, any of the standard basic angular validators we want to support those so in order to do that we're going to have to add some additional custom logic so this makes the method quite a bit more complex but the basic idea of what we're doing now is still reasonably straightforward so we're still looping over all of our controls but now what we're doing is we're creating an array called validators to add and then we're looping over all of the entries inside of the validators object that is supplied. And then we just check the key that is passed in, which is the name of the validator. So things like required or min length. And if any of those are present, we push the validator that matches that key into the validators to add array. So if someone supplied a key of min, we're going to push in the validators.min validator, and we're going to also supply that with the value that they supplied to that key. So we basically just do this for every single default Angular validator, and some of them do behave a bit differently, like required, for example, doesn't have a value that is passed into it. You just pass validators.required directly, but it's basically the same concept for every single one of these validators. And then at the end, we just have the same code that we had before. We call add control, we supply the control name, and then we just create a new control with the form builder, pass in the control value. If there is one, we'll set that as the, the default state for that control. And then we just pass in the validators array as well. So whilst we are here, let's also add in a method for handling the submit. So we just want a way to see the values when the form is submitted to make sure everything is working. So this is going to tell us if the form is valid according to the validators that were supplied, and it's going to give us all of the values for the form as well. So our reactive form is set up now, but we still need to actually render something out in the template that will interact with this form. As you can see right now, there isn't anything actually on the page. 
So again, the basic idea is that we will loop over all of the controls that are supplied and we'll add an input in the template for each of them. So we'll go to the template for our component and we're just going to create a standard form. And inside of that, we're going to loop over our ion items for every control that was supplied in that JSON form data. And then we create an input for that. And we just specify whatever type was supplied. We set that onto the type. We add the form control name to whatever was supplied as the name for that control. And that's going to successfully hook that up with our reactive form. And then if there was a value supplied, we set that as well. But once again, just like with the problem that we just solved, things aren't so simple. So you can see we are getting some uh, controls rendered out right now, but we currently are only able to support uh, basic ion inputs like text or uh, telephone, email, that kind of stuff. If we want to support more than that, like text areas, checkboxes, toggles, ranges, we will need to add in some more custom logic to handle those cases as well. So again, this is similar to the last case. We are just checking what's being supplied and then we're doing the appropriate thing in response. So now each of our inputs are going to have an ng if associated with it. So we've changed our basic ion input to only render out if the type that is supplied is text, password, email, number, search, uh, tell, or URL. And then we have these additional input components available. So if a type of text area was supplied, we render out the text area component. For checkboxes, we render out checkboxes, toggles, toggles, and so on. Uh, so some of these components do work a bit differently, like the ion range, for example, has some different uh, configuration options. And this is something we also support in our JSON data. If we go down to the range, control, we can see we can supply an optional options where we can configure those values. So this controls the minimum and maximum value of that range, as well as what icon should be used for the range slider. And so this will allow us to support all of the uh, default Ionic inputs. I think I've covered all of them here. Maybe I've missed one or two, but you could extend this to include whatever sorts of controls you wanted to support. So our form should now be complete. So what I'm going to do is bring the console back up and we can see that all of our fields are rendering here. So this is looking pretty good, but we also want to check that the form actually works as well. So what I'm going to do is just fill out some uh, values here and we'll hit the submit button and you can see that we get our values being logged out. So we have the validation state. So the form is currently not valid. And then we have the values that were supplied to all of our form controls. So this is working exactly as we intended. The reason the form is not valid is because the first name had a minimum requirement of 10 characters. So if I just add in a few more characters here to make up that uh, minimum and submit it again, we should see that the form is now valid. So now we can easily define a form of any length just by modifying a JSON file just to have a bit of fun with that and to show that this actually works. Let's just say we'll get rid of last name and comments. We'll just delete that, save, and the form reloads. And now those fields are gone. We could change whatever validators we want. We can add in more fields. Uh, we can do whatever we want. And our form is going to reflect that. It's going to be a reactive form with all of the great features that uh, reactive forms provide. So this component doesn't support every possible thing you might want to do with your forms. You might need to make some modifications to this to support that, but we're most of the way there already. And the basic concept should be able to be extended to support just about anything. So I'll leave a link to the source code for this application, as well as an expanded article on the concepts here. Uh, that'll be in the description as well as some additional resources for some things we didn't talk about, like the on push change strategy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.